Hey everybody, welcome to Two Dollar Whore. My name is Matt Eddy. It is July, so we are heading off to summer camp. Camp Rolling Hills, as a matter of fact. I'm Matt Eddy, you're watching Two Dollar Horror. Angela's back and she is more uh, female than ever. <laughs> uh, we are talking about Sleepaway Camp 2 Unhappy Campers from 1988, uh, the sequel to well-regarded, much-loved uh, slasher classic Sleepaway Camp. Uh, there's been a little discussion online and, you know, in horror circles and everything about whether or not this franchise is transphobic or not. Um, I don't know. I, I'm a straight white guy who also happens to be an idiot, so I'm really not the best person to uh, tackle this nuanced, delicate topic. Uh, this movie works precisely because this movie does not work at all, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Um, the jokes are bad. The Obi looks as gross as the shit sisters. <laughs> <laughs> the shit sisters? Jody and Brooke showed. Showed shit. Get it? <laughs> the kills are really bad. What did I do? I, I didn't do anything! You're gonna tell. No more whining. The acting is worse than both of them put together. There used to be this camp about 60 miles from here. Camp Arawak. Yeah, I heard about that and all these kids got killed. Pamela Springsteen, sister of Bruce, the boss, she doesn't really sell it as a crazed psycho killer. Speak of the devil. Look who's on TV! I gotta go. I'll be back in a few minutes and TC and Sean can keep you company. Because uh, she's just too damn adorable and sweet to be a crazed psycho killer. Uh, but that's exactly what makes her performance memorable. And really her performance is the reason to return to this movie, I think. It's just so... The contrast of, of what she's doing and how she's behaving, you know, precisely because she's like, she's so cute and innocent. It, her being a killer is just hilarious throughout the movie. Like, no matter what's going on in the movie, it's just, it's funny to watch her be this psychotic villain because she just doesn't sell it. It's not convincing in the slightest. Ran away. Well, I didn't know what to say to her, so I thanked her to thinking how this was all such a strange coincidence. So then I decided to call the shit sisters. You know something? You talk too much. Um, we get a cool song in the opening credits by a band called Anvil. It's called Straight Between the Eyes. <laughs> This movie is produced by Jerry Silva. Uh, he is a producer on this entire franchise. He did a movie called Funland as well. Directed by Michael A. Simpson, who you will remember from such classics as uh, Sleepaway Camp 2. Written by Fritz Gordon, who also was a writer on the Christopher Guest movie Best in Show. Special effects by Bill Johnson. He worked on such movies as Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Eight-Legged Freaks. Starring Pamela Springsteen, of course, as the killer. Uh, Renee Estevez, brother of Emilio. She plays the final girl, Molly. Valerie Hartman is the unpleasant and antagonistic Allie. Um, soap actor and possessor of magic mullet, Brian Patrick Clark plays... Camp Counselor T.C. 
This movie opens with TC. He's got a, a group of boys and one girl sitting around a campfire. He's telling ghost stories. He's hamming it up. Uh, one of the other children says, well, I know a true horror story that happened at this other summer camp five years ago and 60 miles away from here. And he proceeds to recap the first movie for us. He killed. A bunch of little kids were hatcheted to death. And a girl got stabbed while taking a shower. One of the cooks got boiled in some water. Mm. Then we get some, some further exposition to kind of set us up for this movie. He went into a psycho ward a couple years ago. And while he was there, the doctors gave him a sex change. And our parents' taxes paid for it. Well, he or she or whatever got out a couple years ago. And of course, this is when Angela shows up. She's a counselor at Camp Rolling Hills. She collects the one girl there and says, you're not supposed to be here. Get back to the, the girl's cabin. Sends her off. I think she bludgeons her to death out in the woods on the way back. That's what you get for not obeying your counselor. And here's what you get for telling evil stories and having such a filthy mouth. What a bad camper. And this sets up a, a thing that Angela does through the whole movie where she, she kills a camper and then she tells the, the owner and the other counselors that they were troublemakers and she sent them home by the time we get to the end of the movie. There's like four kids left in the camp. Angela's been fired for sending everybody home, but you know, she killed everybody. She killed the owner and, and the other counselors anyway. First act of this movie is going to prioritize nudity and just general objectification. Girls are flashing their boobs to the other girls in their camp cabin. They're taking off their shirts and having sex out in the woods. There's these two little 12 year old boys who call themselves Tit Patrol. They're taking Polaroids, you know, they're peeping in windows throughout the whole movie, which is how they get killed at the end. It's pretty much that's all that's going on. Angela kills one or two people, but it's it's kind of like the uh, slashers have this formula, and not to get too meta and scream here, but it, it's kind of like the barbecue farm formula, you know, where you have sugar, fat, and salt. It's this magic combination that you can't resist. Like once you taste it, you're like you just you're kind of addicted to it, and you want more. Slashers operate in the same kind of way, where they give you first, they give you nudity then they give you comedy and then they give you violence. So they have this like one, two, three punch combination. You just can't look away from it. That's why we all love slashers. Going into the second act, the movie is gonna switch gears and start prioritizing kills and violence. Let this be a lesson to you. Say no. Drugs. Um, this is where this movie turns into a proper slasher comedy. Uh, it leans more towards the comedy, I think, than it does the horror. But all the slashers in the 80s really kind of did that. Um, you know, Friday the 13th. It was, was a little more brutal in its kills than this movie and most other franchises, really. Um, but, you know, this, this movie has fun with the kills. There's a, there's a kid who makes his own Freddy Krueger glove, complete with uh, actual razors, actual sharp razors on the fingers. Uh, he gets his throat slashed by Angela. She finds the glove and kind of, like, sticks her hand out and slits his throat and there's a hilarious scene where for like a full 20 seconds that kid's going ah uh, there's another kid with a with a hockey mask uh, he gets got angela shows up she's got some other boy's face as a mask on her face just like leather face she even has a chainsaw so like I said, eventually Angela gets fired because she's sent 75% of the campers home for being troublemakers. Uh, she's killed everybody, but this is what she's saying. I have to say this, but I've told you before, nobody is to be sent home without my permission. 
Hell, I'm not sorry. Yesterday, I spent the entire day looking for Judd and Anthony. I even called the police. I was afraid they were dead. What if I said that I was sorry and that I wouldn't do it again? I want you out of here before lunch. Uh, she gets fired. She, she goes off to hang out and, uh, and pout by her, by her murder shack. Molly goes up there to console her because Molly's, you know, very nice. And her boyfriend follows her up there, finds his way into the murder shack, and he stumbles upon the tableau of bodies that Angela has set up. Don't go in there! Why not? Ooh, what's that smell? <laughs> and uh, he gets bludgeoned. Decapitated, Angela sticks his head in a TV in a super cool scene. Speak of the devil. Look who's on TV. <laughs> Molly uh, makes it out of there. TC shows up with the camp counselor with the, the super mullet. He gets acid thrown in his face. He's dead. Now we're entering the third act of this movie. This, is, this movie really slows down here because it's just kind of like a, a chase through the woods. But they're nowhere near each other, so we just have scenes of either Molly or Pamela, you know, running across the screen. Or maybe they'll, they'll stop in mid-frame and kind of, you know, look around. It's really boring. You're kind of, you're looking at your watch at this point and wondering when this movie's going to end, which is really soon, as a matter of fact. Um, Angela gets picked up. She finds her way to the road. She gets picked up by this uh, redneck woman in a truck who tells us, uh, she has this weird conversation about how she's too dumb to drink and I'm too fat to fuck. Whatever the fuck that means. Angela kills her. Molly also has made her way to the road later on, flagging down a truck. She needs to get help. She needs to get out of here. You can guess what happened. Window rolls down. It's Angela. We cut the credits and that's kind of the end of the movie. This movie has a few really fun scenes. Uh, the first of which is they have all the camp counselors lined up. They're playing that dumb game that, you know, adults do with children on Halloween where the children are blindfolded and, you know, they stick their hand in a bowl of something and the adult goes, ooh, it's eyeballs or it's guts or whatever. They're doing that um, even though these campers are like 30. <laughs> Uh, they're going down the line, you know, TC has his bowl and he's his entrails and uh, this other counselor, Diane, she says it's eyeballs or whatever and then you get to Angela and she very flatly says Dead teenagers brains. Super hilarious because obviously you know that it actually is dead teenagers brains because she's out there killing all the teenagers. Uh, there's another scene where the boys do this uh, panty raid on the girls cabin. Angela walks in, kicks them all out of there. Uh, she goes to her private counselor room and the girls are like, let's go get our stuff back later on tonight. You know, let's, let's prank the boys back. And so we cut to the girls, they sneak into the boys cabin. The shenanigans happen, you know, they're all horseplay and you know, they're stealing their jock straps and blah, blah, blah. TC walks out of his counselor's room and kind of looks around and goes, Call me when it's over. Uh, this scene was super hilarious for me because there was uh, one day in high school, I was in like 10th grade maybe, I was in the boys' bathroom and I was smoking cigarettes like you do, and there were like seven or eight other boys. We were all smoking and there's like this big, dense cloud of cigarette smoke hanging, you know, just below the ceiling. <laughs> And uh, one of the administrator walks in and, uh, you know, we're all throwing our cigarettes into the urinals. All, you just hear this tss, 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 tss all over the place. Uh, he kind of looks around and he says, oh, we ought to put a pool table in here. And then he just leaves because I guess he didn't feel like dealing with that. So that scene was super funny to me because it, you know, it rang true. This movie had a very limited theatrical release, um, of course, where it shown, like all of these movies in the 80s, was in VHS rentals. This is the perfect uh, Friday or Saturday night movie. You got a couple of your best friends, 
you're you know sleeping over you're heating up the tostinos pizza rolls you got that bag of cool ranch doritos and a couple of two liters of crystal pepsi or whatever was going on in 1988 and it's a great movie to put on for that because if you're a little kid for one it's full of nudity which is what you're looking for when you're a little kid uh it's full of violence and it's full of lowbrow humor you know it's it's the perfect friday you know weekend rental movie and i think that that still holds true even for people like me who are uh in their 40s and just looking for a a nostalgia hit you know or uh, maybe just something dumb to watch on a friday night and maybe that's you maybe you're in your 20s 30s 40s 50s whatever and uh, you and your your significant other or your group of friends you're you're drinking or whatever you want to just say let's let's put on something dumb have a good time watch a, a violent movie full of boobs what well, get any better than that <laughs> uh, so i definitely would recommend this movie if you love the original movie but you've dismissed the sequels because you know you thought they were really hokey and everything the cover of this movie has somebody that's not even in the movie it's just some some random woman and she's holding a knapsack that's got you know a hockey mask and freddy's glove hanging out of it but you've dismissed these movies because they look stupid give this one a watch it's it's a lot of fun i go back to it pretty often mostly because pamela springsteen is just so much fun to watch in it. She's just so unconvincing as a killer. I can't get over it. I love this stupid movie because of that. Um, anyway, don't let people give you shit for watching movies all the time because their world really sucks. And uh, you've been watching $2 Horror. We'll see you next time. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing next month. I was going to do Vampire in Brooklyn, but upon further review, that movie might be a little too terrible to give you any kind of decent review on not that i give you decent reviews anyway but that movie is really bad and i don't think i want to sit through it again so to be determined uh and we'll see you next time so long you almost made it